Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to cover how you could use Visual Studio Code to SFTP into your servers, Linux servers, and then, you know, just, just like SFTP, have it work as SFTP client, but much better because you get other options. And let me show you what I mean. So what, what you need to do initially, uh, by the way, this video is part of a list of tutorial, tutorials covering Zoom Admin uh, platform. So if you have not watched those, I would suggest to go back and watch our Zoom Admin platform videos. We covered, you know, creating a server, connecting you to Zoom Admin, installing different applications using Zoom Admin. You know, we had a couple of WordPress sites, Redis, Client, Redis, MySQL server, and so on and so forth. So in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to connect to that same server and show you how it's done and, and what kind of files you see after you connect. So, to be able to connect, uh, you know, to SFTP into your server, you have to install the extension. So, you, so first install VS Code, right? It's really straightforward and cross-platform. I think you can carry it on Windows and Linux. And then in your extensions, just type remote. Um, and I believe it's there's one of these that's got a few. Um, a few of them so you probably need this one no it's not installed remote development this one here when you install this it just installs a bunch of other ones i think uh, so just install remote development um, i think that's pretty much all you need so once you have this extension installed it should pop up here that says remote explorer it should be one of the options that's being installed now if you go here by default it's gonna uh, doesn't have any targets configured so you can click on configure and point to a file in my case this is the file I'm using it's empty for now but but it's it's pretty easy to configure this and all you have to do let me copy paste so for our, save, our, our server one you just put in a host give it a name um, and then for a host name you could put the IP or host name in our in this case I just put the IP and the user uh, now you could also configure SSH private key here if, if you had one to automatically connect without asking you passwords uh, but in this case I'm not gonna do that and if I go ahead and save this now as you can tell it'll put a um, SSH target here and now what I can do is just right click and connect in the, in the current window you could also open a new window and this is kind of a VS code window so I'm gonna say connect in the current window and it's gonna ask for a password and again this is the password that you used um, when creating a server or in DigitalOcean or whatever your SSH password is right so in my case I'm gonna copy that paste it here hit enter and as you, as you can say it's connecting now it's connected by default again it's not um, it's not gonna have anything yet but I can open a new terminal and by the way this is now in the server that's the other nice that's nice thing that this entire VS code is now integrated inside your server so if you do like open folder this is actually looking into the server folders now so in our case we want to navigate to zoom admin apps folder um, because this is this is where all of our app applications are so if I open this folder it's gonna ask the password again which is again, not so sure. that's why maybe having a SSH key is a better approach but, but anyway as you can tell um, the other nice thing is you can always like right click um, open integrated uh, terminal it will open a terminal uh, terminal here and cd into that folder you know so if you do ls or whatever command this is actually running on the server your whatever commands you have now again this is a really handy and useful feature uh, because not only you can have the full ssh uh, terminal window here you, ha you also have like a visual way to edit your files right like for instance we installed a couple of WordPress sites um, 
And let me explain quickly the folder structure here. So app is where our application is located. So you'll see all, all of the WordPress files here. You can come here. You might even want to change the config, whatever you can do it all here. Um, so each time you create a application, the app is where the application files are. Uh, data is if it's something like MySQL, you'll see the, the data files are in the MySQL folder, uh, data folder uh, in that app, and there's no app here, right? Because it's a server. Now, the other ni nice thing is we also have, we, we map the config files automatically. So you can come here and edit your MySQL config files. And then all you have to do is just restart um, that container. Uh, for instance, like in our PHP my admin case, um, as you can tell, there's there's the P, you know PHP INI file if you want to edit. There's PHP um, in config file for PHP my admin, and app is where um, again because it's an off-the-shelf application, we don't we have not mapped the app folder. It doesn't really matter for us. But that's why. Um, we just mapped the config file here so you can if you want to change something in PHP admin you can come here and change it or if you want to change PHP my you know INI you can change it here um, again this is a overall uh, you know quick tutorial on connecting VS code with your server and also just being able to quickly navigate the zoom admin application folders and config files and, and uh, be able to, to change those. Um, and in our next section, we will be loading, loading you know, 10,000 plus articles in our example WordPress one database. Um, and one thing we might have to change, if I go into our PHP my admin, if you go into import here, it says a limit of two megs on the file. So that's something I'm going to try to um, see if I can change by um, by simply com modifying the config, config files to you know, increase the size here. Because I, th I think 10,000 plus articles will be much bigger than 2 megs that the default gives you. So that's something we'll do in the next section. Thanks for watching. That's how you connect VS Code with uh, your SSH servers and be, be able to modify files directly using VS Code. Thanks again.